let's take a look at the menu and the options. So here you can play, service record, which is uh, viewing all of your metagame information in progress, loadout and customization, options, quit the desktop. Within play, you can play the campaign, you can host a co-op game, find a co-op game, do the Axis invasion where you invade another player's campaign as the dreaded sniper, and yes, you can turn that feature off. Survival, defend command posts against wave of enemies, and then multiplayer, where you challenge other players online in a variety of game modes. Let's go to options here. Let's start with the game. Allow access invasion. Again, you can turn that on and off. Select your multiplayer matchmaking region. Do you want to allow crossplay? How good's your connection rating? Bullet kill cameras and melee kill cameras, you can change the frequency in which you'll see these. If you want to see the multiplayer, toggle bullet cameras. Quick cameras will only show quick bullet cameras. Trap cameras show kill cameras of enemies killed by landmines and other traps. Kill camera HUD overlay. The x-ray, whether you want that on and off. Same thing with Danger cameras, like you want to toggle cameras showing incoming danger, such as a mortar firing or an enemy calling in a bombardment. Show tutorial notifications, credits, legal options, play the intro cinematic. Controls, now this is on PC. So naturally, you're going to have a few extra options here. Your controller layout, keyboard bindings. I don't know, I do have my controller. See? My controller's working. Oh, there we go. Then you could do, go to controller layout. Keyboard bindings. Invert axis sensitivity to the X to the Y. The scope sensitivity on X and Y axis. Iron sight sensitivity X and Y axis. Vibration. Sprinting forces to stand. Then for display. Not going to really go into this because it's for the most part the same as any other game where you can customize your own graphical details but within them here's what you can change the anti-aliasing the shadow reflection detail draw distance texture detail water detail ambient occlusion motion blur tessellation and obscurance fields which is an interesting one which when enabled will render ray traced soft shadows around the player and other characters. Then we've got your V-Sync, your Async Compute. Toggle the use of Asynchronous Compute, which when enabled will process graphics rendering and compute shaders in parallel. Not gonna lie, I don't know what I just read. And reduce mouse lag. Audio, master, music, sound effects, speech, awareness cue. Volume, hit feedback, volume, dynamic range, whether or not you want to enable voice chat, your microphone, push to talk versus voice detection. This is good because some, oddly enough, Japanese games, you actually cannot turn off the music sometimes, let alone change how loud it is, which is stupid. And then accessibility. Now, there's going to be some more of this once I play the game, so I'm probably going to end up pausing the video, and you'll see that. Subtitles, cutscene subtitles, box opacity, text size, text color, colorblind mode. Here's some good ones here. Allow aim assist with the keyboard and mouse. And then a bunch of aim assist in relation to sensitivity reduction while scoped. Aim over the shoulder or iron sight. And then same thing with snap to target. Aim assist. Scoped aim over the shoulder. Or snap to target iron sights. And then your XY sensitivity. And then XY sensitivity while scoped. Or iron sights. Showing tutorial notifications. Should we only show high priority? Should we show more times? Show more frequently, which would be the same as more times, but 
show each tutorial more times before assuming it's been seen. Oh, okay. And reduce the time between tutorials. Oh, there we go. And you can reset tutorials, menu text size, dynamic range audio. Whether you want motion blur on or off at high speeds, disable binocular distortion, and then your HUD, you know, camera direction, fixed north, range adjustment, change the visibility of range adjustment prompts, multiplayer scoreboard type and multiplayer scoreboard team filter. So that is it for this video. I'm going to make another one talking about the game's difficulty. Because when you first choose your difficulty, you get a couple of options. And then once you're actually in the game, there's a huge plethora of added options at your disposal, which is actually very, very nice. So that you can tailor the experience to your liking. Almost kind of like The Last of Us with all the amazing features that they give you. Anyhow, if you liked the video, thumbs up. Didn't like it, thumbs down. I'll bend it in half. Break it off in your ass. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, naturally that would be great. But if not, thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care, and maybe I'll see some of you in the next video. Bye for now.